hip welcome it is time for the week 29 mixed media prompt project for hashtag crafty hip prompts uh, as you know if you've been here before I'm going to tell you what this is real quick and then we're gonna get to it my mixed media prompt project is a follow-up to my making a big prompt card every Monday since the beginning of October I have drawn three prompts from a list of 156 and altered a playing card so this is the playing card I made for week 29 this week using embossed paper, acrylic paint, and seam binding. I like to take those three prompts then later in the week and use them on something other than a card. Um, I might do a, car a card at some point, um, but you know, maybe not. Um, I've done tags in art journal pages and junk journal pages and little assemblages and wall hangings. Last week I did an encaustic... Um, <laughs> yeah, I did an encaustic piece. It's a learning process there. But basically, I'm building a prompt deck with these altered cards and then using them. Later, when I finish my full deck, I can then draw these cards. My idea is to maybe draw two or three of them and, like, do the all the first ones on the cards or all the second ones or the first, second, and third one, that kind of thing. But have a full deck of altered playing cards with prompts on them for a prompt deck. Um, these other projects are just bonus for me to actually use the three prompts I drew in some other manner. So Mondays I draw the prompts, make the card, and then on Saturdays I'm doing a different project with those same prompts. That's all this is. If you want to play along, you're welcome to do so. Use that, you know, you can use the prompts that I drew or you can pull from my full list of 156 prompts. The link to that is below. I just ask that you use the hashtag Crafty Hope prompts so that I can see what you made. If you can also tag me, that'd be awesome. I am at Crafty Hope pretty much anywhere. Um, but tag me because you know how those algorithms get. Sometimes they don't show us everything when you use the hashtags, but they do let me know when you tag me. Okay. Let's get to it. For this week, like I said, embossed paper, acrylic paint, and seam binding. So, embossed paper. Last week, for making my card, I tried to do some ta tickets. These are it's an embossing folder with tickets in them. And the paper I used was some uh, really brittle uh, book paper, and it didn't work at all. But I really liked the idea of the tickets, so I'm going to emboss some others on some like a little bit of thicker paper. And I also picked up this heavyweight construction paper. Um, it was on clearance at Staples this week, so I yeah, I'm gonna try that as well. But first, I'm going to use the acrylic paint prompt and just use some of my craft paints and paint on these surfaces and then emboss them. Just kind of just kind of experiment and see what happens. Um, because I can alter these any way I want and make these tickets my own, hopefully. We're gonna see how that goes. If it doesn't work, then I may pull some of those other embossed papers that I did last week. I actually don't even know where those are. I can't believe I didn't keep them out. <laughs> um, anyway, and then for seam binding, you saw last week I've got a entire shoebox full of different types of seam binding and so lace seam binding and this ribbon seam binding and uh, what did I say um, bias tape and things like that so I will pull from that to finish this out somehow I think I'm going to work in my little junk journal because I'm still trying to finish that and haven't been able to get into it lately so and it's only got a few pages left so i think that's what i'm going to work on today but first i'm going to start by painting these and embossing them i'll probably do the embossing off camera because it's hard y'all saw last week it's hard to get it on my desk and fit so i'm gonna start there all right and i did start there i cut down that construction paper and the whatever that white paper is into more manageable sizes i didn't need huge pieces and I'm painting it with the acrylic paint. I had, you saw four different colors out. So I did four of the black and four of the white. And really this was just an experiment because I thought, and it really worked. It did exactly what I wanted to do because I thought painting over, especially that black, when I embossed it, some of that black would peek through behind the 
the paint. So I'm not going to show you all of the painting. I am going to show you that I, that first one was a coral blush. This one is, I believe, sea breeze. And that's the color I'm going to end up using. And it's just an Americana paint. But once I got them all painted, these other two, one's a gray taupe and the other one is, oh, sea glass, I think. I pulled out my uh, walnut crystals that have been mixed with water to make an ink and I'm just splattering it on my painty papers so and some of these weren't completely dry because I got tired of trying to dry them <laughs> so I I'm going to splatter this on all of these pages so not just the ones you can see here not just the yeah these two colors I'll do it on the other two I painted as well just to add some texture to these papers so this gets my acrylic paint in here and then yeah see here i'm going to show you the other two i didn't think i kept this in here so i'll splatter these as well and while it is still wet or do i dry it oh y'all i think i dried it for the most part it wasn't completely dry and i keep forgetting that these walnut crystals are not uh wa like water safe they're not you know if you wet them they will bleed but whatever so this is some Amsterdam acrylic ink in a, I think it's called like light red hue or something. I can't ever remember. It's a, it's a pale, pale pinky peach. And I just wanted to put a lighter color on that coral. It's not really going to matter because I'm not going to use that coral. It does work out beautifully though on the embossings here in just a little bit. But I painted on there and I do splatter it just a little bit over there on that sea aqua as well. Yeah, I'm like, well, I've, I've got it out. I'm going to go ahead and splatter it some. And then I dry all of that. So I'm going to give you all a look at all of these. Some of the papers. Now, this is the paper I end up using here. The black with that. I'm trying to show you how the black peeks through those tickets a bit and that's exactly what I wanted it to do. Initially I thought I was going to paint some the paper black and then put the other acrylic paint over it but it, when I found this black construction paper I was like oh well that would be even better so and it held up a lot better than that white paper did because I did have some of that white paper tear uh, there just like that just like that other paper did so whatever this embossing folder is made out of that plastic is it is sturdy so there are those I'm going to y'all I picked the, up this little guillotine cutter at a uh, estate sale and I haven't used it yet so I was like you know what let's see if I can use it to cut this down in a straight line so it did okay so I'm just cutting these down. I had picked out, you can see that little stack there to the left. I thought maybe I'd cut all of those down. But once I cut this one down, I was like, what's the point? This is the one I like. I'm going to use it. So I put up my guillotine cutter and I ended up trimming the rest of this just with my scissors because you know the tickets have the little, the divots between them that I wanted this to have more of that shape to it but I'm not being precise or exact or anything I'm just kind of giving it that shape and some of it yeah ends up like tearing away kind of perfectly but yeah I've got this little line of tickets that um yeah so that's embossed paper and acrylic paint done for this one there is my little junk journal you can see there's where I had the ticket prompt I think and use this journal but there's not too many pages left. I did one. I think the one on the left I had done off camera one day when I was just playing. But this next page here is a, you can see it's an eco print. You can see the leaf pattern on there. And with the eco prints, I'll go ahead and tell you, I, I don't like to cover them up a whole lot because I think they're so pretty. The color of them, the texture, all of that, I don't really like completely covering them up with collage the way I do a lot of things. So... Yeah, I tore down my ticket to just the two that would fit on that page. And then I pull out my little pencil case that has what I consider focals in it. And I'm going to start pulling things out, trying to find something. Did you see that? That was the just the feet that I had left over when I did that tag with the beach scene on it with the lace. But I found this frame in there that's uh, just, I don't even know. It's black. And, oh, I have to share this with y'all. How funny is this? It's from a magazine. I cut it out. And, um, yeah, I'm not going to use it, but I just I put it back in my box because I think it's too funny. just didn't think it went well with the ticket somehow. 
But anyway, I sorted through that box for a while and finally was like, you know what? I'm just going to use a yearbook photo. So I ended up pulling out this guy. We're, he's not, he's not going to end up making the final cut. Neither is that frame, but I'm going to mess with those for a while until I finally come up with my design. Now, I do like the graphic statement that that frame is making there, but it takes away too much of that. Like I said, I like the eco print in the background, so it, it just took away too much of it. So to accent the background, I'm going to use some of my favorite Liquitex gold acrylic ink and just splatter it on there. I'm still working, you know, in little bits with that bottle that's almost empty. And since I knew I was going to use those uh, Seabreeze tickets, I go ahead and pull out that same paint again and just put a little bit in my palette and water it down and do some splatters of it as well. And that also brings more acrylic paint into this little page because it's this is a super simple kind of page that I end up but the big thing was the embossing and kind of playing with that technique of painting over the paper so here I'm gonna put just a touch more with that guy and that frame and trying to place things and yeah, I, I'm gonna move it around for a while. I cut out a lot of the futzing I did because yeah. So I went ahead and grabbed some seam binding and I got that lace kind. I really liked this like antique color of it, but I think that's where I started to decide that the guy wasn't gonna work because the lace doesn't really kind of go. It's too feminine or something. So I was like, well, maybe I'll figure something else out. But for now, I wanted to just add a little more texture on that eco print. So I pulled out a couple of my Tim Holtz tissue tapes. Now, y'all, I love, love this tissue tape because it it's just so transparent and just adds a little touch of texture and all of that. But y'all, it is so brittle. It like doesn't come off the roll. At least this one, my favorite one here with the, the moths and the butterflies. It just tears into these little strips. I was thinking maybe if I heated it a little, but then I was like, well, maybe that would just stick the whole thing together more. <laughs> so I was like, I'll just try to be patient and work at this. So I'm sorry you're having to watch this struggle, but I really just wanted something neutral with some texture to add on the top of this eco print here just something besides the splatter so I finally work out a couple of little pieces I really do wish when it comes down to it because I have that margin across the top of the page up there I wish I had added a little more up there across the top but it's it's you know it, it works out to be such a fun page. I, I didn't know I was going to have such a humorous page when I started with this. <laughs> but it's, yeah, I think it's awesome. So this other one that's got like the writing on it, it, it works much better than my butterfly one. So I'll get a couple pieces down of that. I think I'm going to add a couple more here. And I'm almost creating a frame, but not completely. I just was trying to get those all connected but it, not that it mattered. And then I went and grabbed a yearbook from, a, I think it's from an all girls college over in Mississippi because the yearbook itself is called my lady and it, it cracks me up. y'all. <laughs> the whole yearbook is called, and I found several versions of it. I think I have two of them and the yearbook is, you know, yearbooks have names and this is my lady. So I took a ruler and uh, just ripped out a couple, like a line of three of them, but I decided that was too much. So I just needed two. And I was so tickled by their two different faces. And that comes into play with the sentiment I end up putting down. So I've got these elements. I've got that seam binding. And right in here, I decided, oh, that would be a really nice way to kind of extend this page because this particular page was sh you can see shorter and smaller than some of the others in this journal so I just put a little bit of the uh, Fabri-Tac down that edge and then my seam binding and I cut it down and then I'll put more of the Fabri-Tac down and stick my my embossed paper tickets on top of it now y'all this bothers me a little bit it's cattywampus it's sideways it's got an angle to it I'm not happy with that but it's okay it's not the focal of that. It, these two ladies are going to be the focal. So I inked up their edges with some walnut stain distress ink. And I'm just, yeah, that was the last time I think I'm going to bring this frame in here. 
you're thinking, okay, I can bring them in. But like I said, it takes away so much of what I've got going on in the background that I didn't think it was necessary. So here I thought maybe I'd bring the seam binding in in some other way. So I cut down a little strip to maybe put behind them. But it, it really does just get lost on the page. So I'll end up just keeping the seam binding on that edge. And it's fine. It doesn't make a huge statement. But these prompts don't have to be the focal of my pieces. I just have to work with them and incorporate them and use these things that I have. So here I brought in my Tim Holtz snarky words. And y'all, I don't often use these because some of them feel very mean to me, like not things I would say. Um, but this one, it cracked me up because of these two ladies on here. And it says, one of us is right and the other one is you. And I can't decide which is which when I look at these two ladies. <laughs> so, but it's, it's perfect. It gives me a chuckle. It's super cute. I hope you like it too. And I'm going to take my Uhu glue stick and just glue all of this down. And then for a final touch, I will grab my Stabilo all and just go under those two little phrases with, with it and then activate it with some water to, to kind of make that phrase pop a little bit more. And then that's going to be it, y'all. I am tickled with how this one came together and the way that the black kind of pops through on that embossed paper. It's something I'm definitely going to have to try again. I am looking forward to seeing how else y'all use these three prompts or the prompts that you pull. So make sure that you tag me and share those with the hashtag Crafty Hope prompts. If you like this, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please mash that subscribe button. All of those things, the comments, the, the likes, the subscribes, they help me get seen by other people. And I, you know, I want to share this inspiration with as many people as I can. Alright guys, I, um, I will see y'all very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.